Kimberto Kimberto presents, as part of a project for Sonoma State University Geology, our visit to the Alamo Impact Event in Southern Nevada. After our visit to Ely, Nevada and Garnet Hill, we drive south on Highway 6, then on Highway 318 to the Alamo, Nevada area to visit a couple of sites to look for evidence of the Alamo Impact Event. The drive from Ely to Alamo, Nevada takes about two and a half hours, and much of it looks like this photo here. This is a map from the 1997 Geological Society of America's field trip to sites in Utah, Nevada, which have evidence of late Devonian events. Remember, the Devonian period is from about 419 to about 358 million years ago. On this trip, we visited sites one and two, as indicated by the red arrows on the map, and we attempted to go to site four, but we couldn't quite get there. You really need a four-wheel drive at this point to get to site four. If you want any more information on this map and these sites, please look at the re references at the end of this presentation. The Alamo impact event occurred about 378 million years ago, when most likely either an asteroid or a comet collided with Earth. This collision took place on the west coast of North America with impact on the shallow sea floor in what is now southeastern Nevada. The original size for the crater is estimated to have been about 60 miles wide and 2 miles deep. The impact and ensuing multiple tsunami left evidence of the impact over a wide area. Here you see a view from stop one looking back towards Highway 375, the extraterrestrial highway. Notice the Native American petroglyph on the quartzite boulder in the foreground. This map shows Nevada in the late Devonian when it was almost entirely underwater. The impact occurred off land, the land is far to the east or the right on this map, in shallow water on part of a carbonate platform. These platforms form as a result of reef building organisms, such as corals, in shallow, warm, calm waters. Impact events are collisions between two astronomical objects. These occur regularly in planetary systems, such as our solar system, which has planets revolving around a central star. Big events on Earth involve collisions with usually either an asteroid or a comet. An asteroid is made up of minerals and rocks and are anywhere from a few feet across to hundreds of miles. Comets are snowballs of frozen gas, rocks, and dust. The speed at which these hit the Earth exceeds 45,000 miles per hour. Here's a list of possible evidence indicating an impact event has occurred. I will discuss each of these in a little more detail. Iridium. Elevated levels of iridium are indicative of impact events. Meteoroid impact lapelli. These small rocks are formed from airborne pulverized limestone in the impact ejecta. Impact breccia. The name kind of says it all. This rock, a type of breccia, forms during impact events. Jumbled index fossils. This refers to conundant element a type of fossil which has been studied with some detail at the Alamo impact sites. Continuing with the different types of impact evidence, the next is shatter cones. These are distinctive cone or fan-like shaped features in the rocks that are found at impact sites. Shocked quartz is planar deformation features in quartz that result from impact events. Stisovite here we have not too good a picture, but it's a picture of some stisovite. This is a high pressure form of silica, which is very rare on Earth's surface, and its presence indicates an impact event. And the last but not least, the impact crater. This is perhaps the best evidence of all, but in this case, we still haven't found the crater, if we ever will. Iridium is the second densest naturally occurring metal after osmium. There is very little on Earth's surface, in fact it's measured at about one part per billion. Because of its density and the fact that it's siderophilic, which means iron loving, most iridium migrated to Earth's core with the iron as the Earth cooled. Meteorites have a much higher concentration of iridium, 
So increased levels of iridium on Earth's surface may indicate that there was a meteorite strike in that area. This graph shows iridium abundance in parts per billions on Earth's surface from a variety of locations. We now know there is a worldwide iridium spike at about 66 million years ago when a meteorite struck Earth and likely caused worldwide extinctions, including that of all non-avian dinosaurs. Lapelli is from Latin and means little stones. Lapelli are common in volcanic rocks and form in the air during hot, explosive volcanic eruptions. In this photo, we see a limestone lapelli, which occur at some of the sites of the Alamo impact and were likely formed from pulverized airborne limestone after the Devonian impact. These impact lapelli are further evidence of an impact event here at Alamo, Nevada. Impact breccia is a type of rock created by impact events. And breccia is a rock consisting of angular, poorly sorted fragments which are cemented together. By angular, we mean the fragments in the rock are not rounded, and by poorly sorted, we mean they're of different sizes. And breccia generally refers to a type of sedimentary rock formed by sedimentary processes. However, impact breccia is not a sedimentary rock, it's a metamorphic rock. Upon impact, rocks are melted, shattered, and mixed together, and then they're cemented together to form the breccia. Here's three examples of very different looking breccia near the impact event site at Hancock Pass. There is also fossil evidence from fossils known as conodon elements, indicating that there may have been an impact event here in southern Nevada. Conodont elements are teeth-like microfossils from vermiform, which means worm-like, animals which existed in marine environments for over 300 million years. They are excellent fossils for dating rock formations. In addition, these fossils also provide environmental data such as water depth and temperature. At some Alamo impact event sites, the conodonts are kind of out of place in terms of both time and location. For instance, you might find older and younger conodonts mixed together. You may also find shallow water conodonts mixed with deeper water conodonts. Clearly, something has occurred. Planar deformation features, PDFs, can occur in quartz, and this type of quartz is often referred to as shocked quartz. These PDFs occur when quartz is exposed to intense pressures, such as those at impact events or nuclear explosions. These tremendous pressures alter the crystal structure of the quartz. Here are photos of shock quartz from the Alamo impact area taken under an optical microscope. These sets of straight, narrow, parallel lines in the quartz reveal the presence of planar deformation features. Although first discovered at nuclear test sites, PDFs are indicative of impact events. Stisovite is a polymorph of silica, as is quartz. Remember, polymorphs are minerals which have the same chemical composition but different crystal structures. Stisovite is very rare on Earth's surface. This pressure temperature diagram shows that stisovite forms at high pressures, those above about 7 gigapascals, as indicated on the vertical axis, whereas it's at relatively low temperatures, as you can see on the horizontal axis. Compare the crystal structure of stisovite with that of quartz. It is more densely packed. This is reflected in the fact that stisovite is much denser than quartz, 4.3 versus 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Stisovite is often associated with cosite, the middle polymorph in this chart. It is uncertain if either of these two have been associated with the Alamo impact event. Shatter cones are distinctive cone or fan-shaped features in rocks. They may resemble a horse tail. They're formed as a result of high-pressure, high-velocity shock waves. They're only found in two places, underground nuclear test sites and impact sites like the Alamo impact site. Shatter cone-like structures have been found at the Alamo impact sites. You can see this photo here with the horse tail look like appearance. This is a shatter cone. 
Impact craters, when they exist, provide perhaps the best evidence for an impact event. These are formed by hypervelocity impacts, remember 45,000 miles per hour. However, the surface of the earth is dynamic and craters can be deformed, buried, or eroded over time because of active geologic processes. On earth, these craters are mostly found in stable inland regions of continents, like the Beringer Crater here in this photo. As yet, no crater has been found for the Alamo impact event. The impact was likely underwater and in a very tectonically active area. The crater itself may have been dismembered, buried, or otherwise rendered unrecognizable in the last 380 million years. Our first stop to look at the Alamo Breccia is uh, west of Hancock Summit. From the intersection of Highway 318 and Highway 375 at Crystal Springs, Nevada, Drive southwest on Highway 375, the extraterrestrial highway, for about 13.5 miles. At that point, you'll see on the left side of the highway a guardrail which ends. You're going to turn on a road right at the end of the guardrail and park in the parking area there. The exposure is towards the south, as you'll see in the next photo. Here's the exposure of Alamo Breccia from the parking area off Highway 375. The geologist here is shown for scale. Recalling the earlier photo of the Native American petroglyph, well that would be just off to the left in this photo. The references I provided earlier give a great deal of information about the site and it's worth your while to look at those before you go. The Alamo Breccia covers about 4,000 square miles across 11 mountain ranges and is centered in southeast Nevada. It has an average thickness of 70 meters. There are many different identifiable types of breccia created by this Devonian impact event. Here are two very different looking samples we found at the Hancock Summit location. Everywhere you look is breccia. For more information on Alamo breccia, please see the references at the end of this segment. Here's something kind of interesting that we found in several locations at this site. And what these are, uh, these are holes from paleomagnetic coring. Rock cores are drilled out and removed and taken back to the lab for paleomagnetic study. Uh, paleo paleomagnetism is the study of the record of Earth's magnetic field that's left in the rocks and sediments. They can use this to help constrain ages for rocks and to help reconstruct deformational histories. Um, it's pretty cool, so if you see these, that's what you're looking at. Our second stop is about 20 minutes from the first, but I'm providing directions from the Highway 318, Highway 93 junction. From that junction, drive northeast on Highway 93 for about 1.2 miles, where you turn left onto a dirt road. I don't believe it's marked there. On that road, just off the highway, you come to a borrow pit. Drive about halfway around the borrow pit and continue north until the road ends. Stop here and continue walking a short way, uh, probably less than 10 minutes, to the outcrop. See the next photo that's coming up. If you have more time, you can hike further up the canyon, about a mile or so, for a more complete exposure. This is the view after I've parked the car and we're heading up the road towards the outcrop straight ahead. Here's the breccia, a short walk from where we parked the car. I believe this is from the upper portion of the Alamo breccia. If you have an extra hour or so, there's a collection of Native American petroglyphs at the Ash Springs Art Rock site, which is about 15 minutes from our second stop. From the extraterrestrial highway sign at the junction of Highway 375, 318, and 93, you drive south on Highway 93 headed for Alamo for about 5.5 miles. Just before the town of Ash Springs, you take a left on a dirt road and you'll drive a short ways and you'll have to open and then close the gate to proceed to the area. This is a site with about 60 petroglyphs. Um, they're done in the what they call the traditional basin and range style. There's warm water springs nearby and apparently the Piranagat people wintered at this site.
Here are a couple of examples from the Ash Springs Art Rock site. Our journey continues as we leave Alamo, Nevada to our next stop at the Lunar Crater Volcanic Field, which is about 142 miles away, a little more than a two-hour drive. We drive west on Highway 375, the extraterrestrial highway, past Area 51, and then through tiny Rachel, Nevada, and onward to the Lunar Crater Volcanic Field. See you there. As we leave Alamo, Nevada, Here's a friendly reminder to make sure you have enough gas to finish the journey. Thanks for watching our visit to the sites at the Alamo Impact Event. See you next time.